Would you all please pray with me? O Holy One, speak to us now and inspire us, touch us, and bless us through your word and through the words that you place on each of our hearts. And O oh dear God, may the words that I have to offer here this morning please you and honor you and glorify your holy name. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. A few weeks ago, while I was browsing a worship resources website, as I often do, I got a bit distracted. And I found myself looking at t-shirts, Christian-themed t-shirts on a related web page. And I happened to come across a t-shirt that read across the chest, Jesus took naps. And in smaller print beneath it, it said, be like Jesus. Jesus took naps, be like Jesus. And there was a scriptural reference to our text today from Mark chapter 4. And so for a time after that, I thought that my message for today would be one about setting personal boundaries and practicing self-care as a spiritual discipline. However, as is often the case when I then opened myself up and allowed our gospel reading to be in conversation with our current context for today, the meaning of our text this morning just took off in a completely different direction. So then, let us now take a closer look at our reading from Mark for today. Now, first of all, you may recall that Mark was the first of the Gospels to be written, and that the author of Mark writes with this sense of urgency and immediacy and abruptness. And that is because those earliest Christians believed that the second coming of Christ was going to happen at any moment. And so the gospel writer of Mark wanted them to be ready. So here in our story today, we are only into the fourth chapter of Mark, but a lot has happened already. What we know so far from Mark is that Jesus was baptized. He then spent 40 days in the wilderness, and soon thereafter he was performing miracles and healing people. And then he called his disciples, and he had been busy and focusing on teaching them in the form of parables. Jesus' first days of ministry certainly were very busy and active and full. And so there are Christian writers today who believe that Jesus led his disciples out there in the boat that day just to take a much-needed break, to get away for a bit, to rest and relax. And as the story is told in Mark, it wasn't long before Jesus did relax that day, so much so that he fell right asleep right there back in the stern and in the presence of his disciples on the boat that day. But I am not convinced that that is all that it was as to the purpose and mission of that boat trip that day all of the way across the Sea of Galilee. For as it was with Jesus' earthly ministry, there was always a lesson to be learned, an example to be followed, a deeper truth to be revealed in every moment with Jesus. And so, I believe that it is especially significant 
that this pericope begins with Jesus instructing his disciples in this way. He said, let us go across to the other side. Let us go across to the other side. These, my friends, are powerful, powerful words, especially coming from Jesus. Jesus, the one who is the all-time boundary, crosser, way, maker, miracle, worker, and promise keeper. Jesus said, let us go across to the other side. In this story, the other side represents the unknown and the unfamiliar. It was Gentile territory in the country of Gerasenes. In Mark's Gospel, this might be considered Jesus' first foray into what is clearly outside of the disciples' comfort zones. It is a foreign land, a place far away off in the distance, and it is home to the other. Surely then, it is intentional that Jesus directs his disciples to go to the other side. And not only that, Jesus is so relaxed and apparently confident in his disciples' abilities and preparedness to take this journey that he actually does take a nap while they faithfully do their best to then navigate those treacherous waters during a raging windstorm. All because they heard Jesus speak directly to them when he said, let us go across to the other side. And yet, and yet the disciples certainly knew and understood the warning signs. They knew perfectly well their own limitations, and they knew that they would soon be in over their heads, both literally and figuratively. And so what did they do? They cried out to Jesus in their despair and in their desperation. They knew that they could not finish this journey without him. And they knew that they needed his guidance and direction and his help. And Jesus understands their deepest needs fully and completely. And so he responds immediately, and in doing so, he assures them of his steadfast presence in their lives and on this journey that they are taking together. And then he speaks the words that they need to hear, that they long to hear in that very moment. He says to the raging storm swirling around them, Peace, be still. Peace, be still. As you engage with our gospel reading for this morning, I invite you to take a moment and reflect on a time in your own life when you found yourself in uncharted waters, so to speak perhaps with strong waves rocking your boat back and forth. Or maybe the winds of change were blowing unrelentingly. Maybe it was during a personal crisis of some sort, or a time of significant transition within your life. Or perhaps it was through a deep, deep loss that you have suffered and endured. What was it that grounded you during those times of uncertainty and change? 
Who are the ones who provided you with strength and support that you needed at that time? And what was it that finally brought you comfort and peace during those trying times? Recently, as I have been dialoguing with this scripture passage and Jesus' words here, let us go across to the other side. I have been reflecting on some of our collective experiences in our journey together as the people of God. Now, of course, there is that global pandemic that has wreaked havoc all across our planet, that has completely upended our lives in just about every imaginable way. The losses have been layered, and the anxiety and stressors indescribable. And yet, and yet, as I look back now, over these past 16 months or so, now that we've almost reached the other side of COVID, I am able to recognize Jesus there in that boat with us offering his calming and steadying presence and words to anchor us. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Throughout this month of June, we continue to celebrate pride as a nation and as a denomination and as a congregation Two, as we lift up the courage and the resilience and the determination and the giftedness of our LGBTQIA siblings. And, and we also commit and recommit ourselves and our church to advocating and demanding equal rights for all people. However, just this past week, we were painfully reminded of all of the work that there is still yet to do when the Supreme Court sided with a religious social services agency that continues to refuse to consider married LGBTQ couples as potential foster parents. In the days since then, I am pretty sure that I have heard Jesus' voice saying, let us continue to go across to the other side, for we will reach those shores of true equality someday. And then, just yesterday on June 19th. It was the first time that our Juneteenth celebrations all across our nation were finally recognized as an official federal holiday. And yet, and yet we can also be sure that Jesus continues to call out to all of us from that stern directing us to paddle on and to paddle harder through those deep and murky waters of systemic racism until we finally find our footing on that other side, on that solid ground of freedom and justice for all. As Christians and as people of faith, we are all in this boat together with Jesus at the helm calling out to us, let us go across to the other side. Let us go across to the other side. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>